I'm Troy Kirby with my Edmonds News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. During the afternoon of February 23rd, the Senate debated Substitute Senate Bill 5066, which compels a peace officer's duty to intervene of their fellow police officer if they witness excessive force. The bill passed the Senate 2821, moving on to the House for consideration. You know, when I watched the video of the killing of George Floyd, I saw officers, uh, aside from Derek Chauvin, standing by protecting Derek Chauvin while he was choking the life out of George Floyd. And I saw in the video members of the public who were all around asking, begging to have them stop. And I can imagine the desperation of those people. And I can imagine them wanting to pull Derek Chauvin off of George Floyd. But seeing and knowing that if they tried that, those other officers would do something to them perhaps just as bad. You know, it's, that's a little bit of a troubling statement that, that we don't want to protect them because in protecting them, we make them, we make them more vulnerable somehow. Uh, we have whistleblower protections for lots of people, for lots of different professions in our state. The bill before you is about empowering our good officers, our honorable officers, our ethical officers who want to do the right thing and making sure they have the policies, the procedures in order to do that. And so the bill does say that those officers who are on duty um, have this obligation. What we want to do here, I think all of us, is uh, is make uh, uh, life clear and and uh, and be protective of our law enforcement officers who go into harm's way to protect us. What is permissible use of force under our law is something that has been evolving, and I suspect by the end of this session will have evolved further. So it is problematic to try to say that what it is is objectively reasonable and expect officers to be able to follow that. You know, there's I've seen so many times where there's we've done these things on the floor and we we run these bills that because we need to do something we need to and we rush to um, without taking full consideration of of the input of maybe those that we are affecting. And in this case, the agencies may or may not agree, but if you talk to those on the street, the officers on the street, then you're going to get the true feelings of what they really feel about some of these things that we are doing to them. And you have to consider, I think, the ramifications of, of a bill like this. So it questions their motives. And, it, you know, with no clear definitions um, to make their questions their own, they, they question their own decisions when they're on the street. So their own their own um, skills of how to how they have to quickly decide what they're going to do. And so I worry that maybe paralysis by analysis. I mean, these are these are seconds sometimes that they have to make these decisions. On February 24th, the House debated in gross substitute House Bill 1068, which exempts election security information from public records disclosure passing the bill 6137, moving the legislation onto the Senate for consideration. So be, before I actually start about the policy of this bill, I just want to reemphasize that this is an urgent bill requested by our Republican Secretary of State and our Association of County Auditors. It's also supported by the Allied Daily Newspapers of Washington, which rarely support bills like this, but they know how important it is. Mr. Speaker, our election officials regularly work with the Department of Homeland Security and our, our state auditor's offices to perform physical and cybersecurity assessments. Although federal protocol clearly outlines that these reports are not disclosable, our, our state law is really very vague. 
House Bill 1068 closes finite loopholes in election security public disclosure that could put Washington elections at risk. We have we have some concerns on this bill, um, part of which it, it, we, some feel it may not be necessary. Uh, some feel that um, they have just general concerns about uh, restricting uh, information through the Public Records Act, and, and, and many feel that it's it's too broad and it needs to be narrowed down. And I agree with with those uh, those positions, and I do think that there's uh, there's there's work to be done on this bill. We made some progress today. I think we made good progress in committee on, on tightening this up. Uh, I, I voted no in committee, but today I'm going to vote yes. And in, 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 pledge that I would be uh, working with the uh, lady from the 22nd uh, in order to, to keep this bill moving and hopefully we can address our continued concerns as this moves into the other house. Uh, I was also similar to the previous uh, speaker on the no side of this because heavily into data security, data privacy and ensuring the rights of individuals of transparent accountability within our government is always a top priority within our state. We need real solutions Mr. Speaker, we need to understand what's going on and our people have called this out. We've seen this now more than ever in this last election and the previous ones. Uh, but we also have been hit a lot by cybersecurity hackers. Frankly, the joke has been um, people think we're Washington DC when they try to hack us. They think they're going after the federal government sometimes. So we get a larger number than the average states. But uh, as a reminder, you know, th this bill simply um, exempts, um, you know, the, the continuity of, of operational plans, security audits, security risk assessments. And this information, again, if they get into the wrong hands, folks will just uh, want to cause havoc to our election system and our, and our hardworking uh, uh, election officials. The House voted on gross substitute House Bill 1176, which removes the ability of school districts to withhold diplomas transcripts, or grades based on unpaid fines or damage to school property. The bill passed the House 7720, moving on to the Senate for consideration. I would like to make sure that we understand that this is a matter of equity. We know that sometimes when a youth is 17, there might be some indiscretion or there may be a fine or a fee and it will look insurmountable when you're 17 but I'd like to have a limit on the amount of time that that fee or that fine can withhold a transcript because we know that access to education is a vehicle to take you anywhere that you would like to go. I would like to ask that you vote in support of Bill 1176 because it is one more tool in the toolbox for access to education and it is a matter of equity and opportunity. We talk about equity and things on this particular bill, but uh, we also don't, we're not discussing accountability. And so even some students, yes, they have a fine because maybe they lost a book and uh, didn't have that. And we definitely need to make sure that doesn't happen again. But I've had students in my school spray paint kit, try to burn it down and cause thousands and thousands of dollars of damage. Didn't matter the color of what they, what they looked like. It just mattered that they did it and they did it willfully. They were prosecuted. And now they owe the school district thousands of dollars for what they did. They did it on purpose. And so what you'll hear from this side is that um, accountability is also something we have to account for when we uh, look at this particular bill. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by My Edmonds News, covering the 2021 legislative session.